Hello, it's James, future multilingual. Um, final video of the year, I think. So, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So, I'm talking about things I've seen online. I'm going to look at three pieces of advice that three people have given that I think are not very good. And then a fourth piece of advice that someone gave that I think is brilliant. Okay, so... Um, the first one comes from this tweet, and the guy's called Fat Store. Brilliant name, no? Brilliant name. Um, this he's posted a video of somebody reading out or saying three, one to three hundred the numbers in Norwegian. This is what I'm referring to when I listen to a list of words. It allows me to practice listening while I slowly increase my vocabulary. I don't think either of those things are true, okay? And I'll explain to you why. I want to, I'm going to post all of these things under the video. But I want us to go back to the Paula Garcia video, Dr. Paula Garcia, no? And she said, she said this, that when, uh, when you're a child, you develop the sound categories with which you will, the phoneme categories with which you will process all languages as an adult. Okay, what's that got to do with Fat Thor, James? What has it got to do? Well, it, this is what it's got to do, right? Because, you know, so what we see is we're not developing second brains as one person on YouTube suggests. It's the same system for all languages, yeah? So, what we're gonna look at is this. So, so if you are using the categories to process the new language, then how does your brain deal with sounds you don't have? Well, Dr. Garcia explains this. What your brain does, from, does through massive amounts of input, enormous amounts of exposure to the language, real language, is it notices patterns. So this sound goes with this sound and the meanings, yeah? And through noticing those patterns, it can start to recruit that knowledge to fill in the gaps. But you only do that if you have massive amounts of exposure to real language, spoken, videos, uh, conversations, uh, podcasts, movies, music, yeah? You don't do that when you listen to lists of words because there's, you, you know what's coming next, so it's so easy. And also, there's no joins between the words, there's no patterns in the language. A pattern is something like in English. Um, so let's take two verbs, and this is not an example of a phonemic pattern, it's a grammatical pattern. So enjoy and, um, uh, enjoy, so I enjoy to dance, no, I enjoy dancing. So we know it's not to, we know it's ing, yeah? Whereas other verbs are to, yeah? So like could be two, I like to dance, yeah? I like dancing. And your brain, you are not, you can't consciously learn these because it's too much, yeah? So subconsciously and incrementally over time, through exposure to examples of real language, enormous amounts, your brain develops the knowledge. The same with phonemes and what goes together, yeah? So that it can fill things in. I'm not so great on phonemes, so I gave a grammatical example, but you see what I mean, yeah? Now, if you're not listening to real things, you're listening to lists, you never get that. So it's one of the key things you need to develop as a listener, you're not getting through this strategy, which, now this guy's, you know, he's just sharing his opinions. I think he's wrong in this case, but he's just sharing his ideas. He's not asking anyone for any money. Yeah? He's just trying to help people. That is a different category to people we're going to see later. Okay? So, this is a, you know, he just wants to help people. Just creating a conversation, bouncing ideas on. In this case, I think he's wrong. He talks about it for other things. Now, it doesn't practice your listening either, because in listening, you need to process things in real time and extract meaning. Now, if you're listening to a list of items of clothing, you know what's coming next. It's another item of clothing. So you're not real time processing and extracting meaning. Now, you might say you're developing knowledge of phonemes and in the language, but look, because there's so many things going on when we listen, 
we're not just processing sounds, we're doing so much more like we've just seen with those two examples. That's why you have to listen to whole things where you're extracting meaning and not lists because it, does, it only practices a tiny amount of what you need to do when you listen, okay? The next, uh, the next problem with it is this vocabulary acquisition. Now take a word like work, yeah? You could listen to that in the list of verbs. Work, trabajo, work, trabajo, yeah? But you're not getting the full meaning of it because when your brain hears words in context, again subconsciously and again incrementally, what it's doing is it's building up your knowledge, your implicit knowledge, not conscious knowledge, and your implicit mental representation of what that word means over time. You don't get any of that when you do lists. You don't get any of it when you do flashcards. That's why they're rubbish. One sentence is nothing. Literally nothing. So, what more? I mean, obviously you, you can make associations with another language that you know, but that's why you need to be developing this skill of comprehending and extracting meaning. That is the key to language acquisition. And you get none of it with this system. It's just predictable lists. So 300, he recommends up to 500, 5,000 words. It's not going to work. Um, for those reasons I've just given. The other thing is, yeah, so you're incrementally gathering knowledge about these words. Let's move on to a second piece of advice I saw, which was you need, you need to develop a second brain in a second language. Actually, she's quite convincing. What she says, this um, woman, is we all have that feeling of being a different personality in a different language. But that's because of the restriction, no? We're restricted by what we can do and we feel that, no? And we can't fully express ourselves. That's not because we need to develop a different brain. It's one system. Next year, we're going to have a look at something called translanguaging. I'm sure it'll blow your mind. It blew mine. But the key to translanguaging is it's one language system that we add to, not separate language systems. Now, you may think it sounds perfectly reasonable to say develop a second brain in a second language. Like we looked at with Dr. Dr. Uh, Wright, yeah? Our brain makes assumptions about things, biases, yeah? We're more likely to say a black football player is powerful and a white football player skillful. Because subconsciously, because of all the things we've seen in the world, our brain makes those sorts of decisions. Subconsciously, our brain is using our biases to push us to ideas that it seem intuitive, but are absolute nonsense, like this one. And that's why you need to learn about a subject. You need to learn about neurology language acquisition or show an interest in them. Otherwise, you're just going to come up with absolute nonsense like this. I'll put the video under. It's just wrong. The final person, again, I think... Oh, I just want to go back to the numbers guy. Yeah. A lot of people find they can say numbers. Now, one, two, three, four, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once, doce, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, whatever, no? Yeah. In sequence. But then when they have to say big numbers individually, they really struggle. It's because you learnt them as a sequence and you've not just been exposed to them in gradually and the incrementally acquired knowledge of them. That's why that's bad. The final person is someone who was saying, she started her video by saying, some people like to sell the idea. Sell is a, sell means for money, no? You can say, oh no, they're selling an idea, but it sort of cleverly makes you think that they want something from you, no? That's what that gives the, and she said that we all learn languages in the same way. Now, obviously we all get different types of input, but as Dr. Garcia said, as Stephen Krashen said, as Jeff McQuillan will say when he comes on the show in the new year, such exciting news. Cognitively, we all acquire a language in the same way. So to say that that's not true and then to sell yourself as a consultant on language learning and offer advice on how to use... It doesn't matter if you put words or sentences on flashcards and memorise them, OK? It doesn't lead to implicit mental representations. If you don't know that, 
yeah? And you don't know that cognitively we all learn language in the same way. Why do these people never give an explanation? How do people learn languages differently cognitively? You tell me. Okay, somebody said to me, James, you should, you should read Paul Nation. You go on too much about crashing. I've read Nation. I've done some, I've even used his vocabulary level test in research. That's how much I've read of him, yeah? But I've never seen anything where he says, where he explains why memorised words on flashcards don't last as long. Like, when you do a how long do these last tested after a month or two months, why do memorised words just... Why is it much lower than words got through input? And efficiency calculations. Of course you get some words from memorising, but it cannot be any part of the key strategy. It is a distraction from the acquisition of language, in my opinion. But if these people are insisting that cognitively we earn languages in different ways and that they can somehow, using something like learning styles, help you and consult you through to find your own individual way, explain to me those different cognitive processes. Because if you can't, it just sounds to me like you want to sell a service. A service that won't work. Now, that sounds harsh, but I think, you know, saying that people sell the idea that languages are learned in one way, accusing researchers of being salesmen is outrageous. People who have spent a lot of time learning about language acquisition, painting them as salesmen, that is outrageous. Okay? That's James. We end on a negative point, but it is a, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, a Feliz Navidad, Feliz Año Nuevo, and I will see you in the new year.